Genetic class, we're going to hit on complete dominance, incomplete dominance, and codominance as your first step. Then we will talk about multiple alleles. if we get a chance today, okay? So those are our key concepts. We have to remember that as we're talking adults in terms of humans, that we are diploid, which also means 2N, okay? Which also means we all have two copies of every gene. Correct? So we each have two copies of every single gene. So yesterday you guys did that lab where you started looking at, and Widow's Peak, was it dominant or recessive? Do you remember? We, we heard that it was a dominant one. So Widow's Peak is dominant. We talked about this, did we not a little bit? Have we done a little mini lesson on this? So if you have it, That means you're showing the dominant what? It's got the dominant allele, but when you see it, it's the dominant something type, phenotype. Okay? So it's the dominant phenotype. So if you have it, you're showing the dominant phenotype. Okay, so you will have two copies of it. You'll either have big W, big W, or big W and a little w. Okay? Does that make a bit of sense? This should be easy now. So remembering back that this one is homozygous and this other one is heterozygous. Okay, and the top one is homozygous dominance, and then the other one heterozygous when we're talking complete dominance. You don't have to say whether it's dominant or not because it's showing a capital W. Yes? Um, sorry. Let's talk a little more complicated then. So, if the parents, your parental genome, let's say, had... So that's the female parent, and that is the male parent, okay? They're diploid because they both have two copies of every gene, right? Well, in order to go from the parent to the gamete, and a gamete is a sex cell, and a gamete is haploid, so this is diploid. To go from diploid to haploid, what process has to take place? Meiosis. meiosis. So meiosis had to happen, and what was formed from here, and the gamete for the female is usually the egg, you either formed a W egg, big W, or a little w. Right? This is all reviewed, so this should be, I can do this quickly. The sperm over here would be big W or little w. For some of you this might be new, it's like, well, wait a minute, what's going on? How do we know which gets together in that little... I'm going to give you a, 
some uh, geek terms. Let's do the offspring. We don't know which egg and which sperm are going to get together, so we put together a, one of those handy-dandy things called a pun and square. And so the female will either give a big W or a little W, and the male will give a big W or a little W. And we line them up, and lo and behold, if that's the offspring there, okay, will it have widow's peak or not? It will have widow's peak. What's the genotype for this? Sorry? What's the genotype of this? Sorry? Homozygous what? Dominant or recessive? Dominant. What is this then? Oh, they're going to get together there. Heterozygous. Heterozygous, yes. And this one will be heterozygous, and this will be homozygous recessive. So the chances of this, assuming that they all got together perfectly accurate and you had four children, you would have three widow's peak to one not. Right? And if you had four children, you'd find it exactly the same as that? Anyone have siblings in the head room? Yeah? Is it equal? Exactly equal siblings, male to female? Maybe, may not be. I know of a family that had six of one, and they were going for their seven because they just somehow wanted them. Yeah, they're to equal it out, but it'll never equal out, just saying. Um, but why isn't it equal? It's randomness, it's the randomness of this. We don't know which egg and which sperm are gonna get together. Right? We do know in humans that the male sperm swims faster than the female sperm. But that's just because of the Y chromosome. But we don't know which one's going to actually meet when there's 100 million of them racing off to the one egg. Okay? Ask me a question. The first generation after this generation is called the F1 generation. Okay? That little N here is shun. Generation. Okay, it's a shorthand. So this is called the F1 generation. You have your parents, which is the P generation. Then your first generation after would be the F1. Or first filial. Then we go F2. And then it goes F2. Okay? This is when you start talking about crosses. Well, what would the F1s look like? Well, you probably have 3 to 1 ratio. Or a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of genotypes. Dominant recessive, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to consider, correct? Mm -hmm. You've got the two alleles separate each other, and then they put together in randomness, and we can figure it out. You won't always find 3 to 1. You make it like 3.2 to 1.8. Like, it depends on the ratio. Okay, so if you had 200 people, you have different parts. So... What happens, though, here, we're going to talk two different ways. I'm going to cross a red flower, same species, with a white flower. Same species. Those are the parents, the red flowers and the white flowers. Okay? And lo and behold, the F1 generation is all pink. Try and solve that. Go. Before we answer this, I'm going to cross the F1s to make the F2 generation. Okay? So I'm going to cross F1s. So I'm going to do a pink flower, crossed it with a pink flower. And the F2s are going to be, anyone want to hazard a guess? Pink. Pink? Well, there's going to be one red to two pink, to one white. Whoa. Kind of cool, right? Makes a little bit of sense or no sense? Ken's like, got it. <laughs>
Yeah? Um, I'm a Good, you're supposed to be. If you're not confused, you already get it. If you don't get it, I'm going to explain it, and you'll be like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah? What's the first generation called again? Like first P, P generation. So let's look on the other side, and let's do this as, as genotypes. If I do RR, that's red, right? And then I'm going to cross it as a parent generation with white, and so we'll do white as... Do you want to do W or do you want to do R prime? Sorry? W. Okay, we can do W, W. When you get something that's totally different from the parent generation, it's not complete dominance. You can't do it as complete. Because if it was red and white and white was dominant, the next generation would be all white. Right? Or vice versa, whichever. So what happened here is, if I do my pun and square for this, The pun and square is just a way to formulate your thoughts of possible combinations. Okay? So what are we going to get for all of these? You're going to get RW, 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 RW. And they're all the same genotype. They're all heterozygous. Right? So RW must mean it is pink. Which also means... Neither the white nor the red is dominant. And they actually have to blend. Okay, so they both give a little and, and they're not dominant. If they both give a little, this is deemed incomplete dominance. Okay? And, the, and to get to the F2, all you had to do was cross one of these with another one of those, and you would get this ratio, hopefully. Cross it and see if you get it. Go, cross to the F2, see if you can get it. So hopefully you were able to go and get from crossing an RW with an RW, you're going to get one R to R, two RWs to one W, W. Okay? Does that make a bit of sense? I don't care what letters you use. You could use R, R, and little r, little r. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is incomplete dominance yields something in between, a blending of the two. It's a blending. Okay? So when we go to the next one, which is code dominance... That would be saying red crossing with a white, different flower, different species, you get red and white flowers. No, this is not how you get a zebra. Okay? Like, is it a white horse and a black horse? You get a zebra? No! Okay? You don't think of a zebra as a dominance. Okay? This is like saying you have red, you have white, and then you get red and white together. Not pink, but they're both showing equal dominance. If you work with someone, you have a co-worker. Correct? So a co-worker is your equal. You don't have to report to that person if they're their co-worker. They're not your boss. Right? So co-dominance represents equal dominance. So it's going to be red and white. What do you think if you red crossed a red white with a red white? What do you think the offspring would be like? Sorry? Red and white. Red and white? How so? Like the same plant? Are there some red plants? Are there some white plants? Are there some red and white plants? If I did the pun in square, red and white spotted flowers would be one of each of these, right? Yep. 
Okay, the difference between co-dominance and incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance means you're going to blend when it's heterozygous. You're going to blend whether it's the colors or the nature. So curly hair, straight hair. The heterozygous of that is wavy hair. It's not curly, but it's not straight, it's wavy. And yet in humans, if you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If you have straight hair, you want curly hair. I don't get it. But anyway, you ever notice that? I just straighten my hair. It made 10 hours. Yes? Anyone do that? My daughter. Mm. Okay, that's beside the point. We're good? So you get one white, one red, to two red and whites. It's very similar to codominance, or codominance and incomplete are together. And I will remind you, this will be on exams, this will be on tests, and some of you will not remember which is difference. And you will go, oh, this is incomplete dominance when it's really codominance. We're going to do multiple alleles just quickly. So far, we've talked about the dominant and a recessive allele, or one or the other, right? There's two alleles. Multiple alleles just means there's more than two forms of the allele, okay? And an example we use over and over are the blood types, okay? And in blood typing, you have A blood, you have B blood, you have... What other blood types are there? O blood and AB blood. Funny side fact, type O wasn't supposed to be type O, it was supposed to be type 0. But they mistyped it in as an O as opposed to 0. The alleles for blood typing are IA. IB, and the recessive little i. How many alleles do you see there? Three. How many do you normally see? Two, and hence multiple alleles. Is this scaring anyone yet? I hope not. Shouldn't be that scary. Since this is capital I, and this is little i, what can you tell me? These are dominant to this. But if I have both of these, because remember you have two copies of everything. If I have IA, IB as an adult, what is that, do you think? Sorry? It's AB blood. So they're actually showing what type of Dominance is that if they're showing both A and B equally. Sorry? Codominant. So the AB blood is codominant. Okay, remember everything has two alleles. We have two copies of everything. So this is AB blood. A blood? What do you think A blood is? IA, IA, or? I a lowercase i. See, those are your two genotypes for A blood. Now you can figure out the B blood pretty easily. Right? And what's O then? Which was zero. Two little lowercase i. So O blood is little i, little i. And there we go. End of lesson. Story done.